humans here on our world, Earth, were the only life. No other life. Yes, I knew of Saturn, Mars, Uranus, those known planets. But my picture was just so enclosed, very small universe, no other life. My children at the time, all four of them, they were even more, um, I want to say lucid or knowing and aware that yes, other life could be in this large universe. But no, they would sit and watch, you know, like uh, take a Sunday afternoon, there would be some kind of paranormal funny show on TV and they'd all be sitting around watching it. And I would go outside during the summer months, you know, and do my yard work, a lot of flowers, what have you, or go practice my piano or just something like that, other than the stupid belief. Uh, September of 1988, one night, uh, we had a two-story house and where we lived was very close to the Sandia Mountains. You, you know the Sandia oh, yeah. Mountains, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. from yes. the Steve, right? With the- right, yeah, right. We, uh -huh. So um, it was warm yet outdoors and I would keep the balcony doors open upstairs. And um, we had gone uh, down to visit, well, no, 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 let me back up. Uh, we had my daughter, my youngest daughter and I, uh, one night we started watching or there was weird lights, blue, red, greens up at the crest of the mountains. You know, there's radio towers and TV towers. And one night, uh, this occurred, let's see, maybe three nights in a row. And one night, I believe it was the last night, there was an airplane and it seemed to be chasing some of these lights away. We couldn't figure it out, even looking through binoculars, what these lights were. Well, the next night, which was a Sunday night, Sunday or Monday night, it was Labor Day weekend, we had gone down to my folks' home you know, who lived in the valley. And when we got back, always oh, about 9 30, 10 o'clock, I sent the kids upstairs, you know, to get ready for bed. I had done laundry. I'm carrying this heavy load of laundry upstairs to put laundry away. Uh, in the master bedroom, the armoire was sitting next to this open door. Well, I opened up the door to the armoire. And what caught my eye through the open door was this unusually bright, very bright white light. Mm -hmm. So I put down the laundry, go out to the balcony, and I look, and it's in the southeast corner of our home, very close. Okay, during this time, I know you're probably aware of the uh, balloon fiestas that uh, New Mexico, Albuquerque holds mm -hmm. each year in October, the 1st of October. So uh, our family were used to having balloons fly over the house and even land on the street near our house all the time. And the kids would be so tickled they'd run out because if they would help hold the rope or pull in the balloon, they would sometimes get maybe a six to 10 foot ride on the balloon. <laughs> well, okay, at nighttime, and nighttime at this time, too, uh, Albuquerque allowed the balloonists to fly over the Sandia Mountains. So that was what I was thinking was happening. So I'm out there looking at this bright, bright, white light, and um, you don't hear any gas going on. You don't see any movement. Mm -hmm. Very stationary. And it's just there, and it's just there, this big brown white light. So I called the kids out. I think there's a balloon out here, and he may be in trouble. So they run, the two smaller kids run to the balcony, and we're just looking at the light. Don't hear any gas, nothing. 
so after an hour, it's still there. And I'm thinking, well, perhaps it's probably Sandia Base or Kirtland Base doing an experiment. Mm -hmm. So after two hours, that thing is still there. And I'm already feeling very, very uneasy about it. I call my folks, can you see this big light from where you live? You know, no, they live too far away. Call my daughters who were at the university at the time, living at the university. And no, no, nothing. They can't see anything. So uh, uh, my dad said, well, why don't you call the radio station? A oh, bad mistake. So I did, I called the radio and the TV stations, K-O-A-T TV. Oh, did I ever hear laughing? There is this weird lady on the phone Whoa. talking about a white light near her house. I hung up. As time went on, my daughter suggested, let's get the binoculars, the weird thing. Okay, I'd look through the binoculars. All of a sudden, the white light disappears, and in a circular pattern are several small lights. Take the binoculars down, the white light comes back on. This repeated itself so many times that night. It was just so odd. Well, uh, like up until 3 o'clock the next morning. Uh, the kids were in bed. I was just so nervous. I was just so, the anxiety, so full of anxiety. What is, it? and if it is an experience. Well, the next day on my way to work, I worked at University Hospital and where they had us park our cars, uh, it was about three, four blocks away from the hospital and a shuttle would come and pick us up. So I had to walk down two flights of stairs, um, 10 steps on each, sta each stairway. And as I got down the first step, uh, the first uh, set of stairs, I began to take a step on the second stairway. And it felt like what I thought was perhaps a student was late for class and he hit me and pushed me down the rest of the stairs. I hit a concrete barrier wall. There was witnesses and they ran to my aid and uh, they said it was like I flew down the stairs. They said, it wasn't like regular falling. You flew, flew down the stairs. So I was pretty badly injured, especially my legs and um, my legs were wrapped. The kids were calling me elephant legs. Uh, later that night, uh, they sent me home and uh, my folks stayed with me till about 1030, made sure the kids were in bed. I had to stay in bed. I was not allowed up and I had to have like three pillows built up to elevate my legs because of the blood flow. A lot of pain. They had me on Tylenol, a little extra strength Tylenol. Well, my folks left uh, before 1030. And I was very tired. I was very edgy. Anxiety was high. And I said, oh, Gloria, stop. It is because you were in the accident. You got to get some rest. So I turn off the light. About 15, 20 minutes later, the colors that we saw up on the Sandia Mountains, the north wall of my bedroom began to fluctuate in those beautiful colors. Huh. Purple, uh, blues, greens. Um, there was some purples and repeated colors. And I said, how calming that is. How very calming. And a few minutes later, what came through the wall? There were five of them and they came towards my bed. I didn't know what to call them. I was trying to get away. I was, to me, at the time, I was screaming. My son was 14 and he was playing football. So he's a big, he was a big 14 year old. 
why isn't he coming to my aid? I'm screaming, you know, his name, you know, I'm hollering and these beings are getting closer and closer. Two came up to my feet, one to my side, one to my head, and the other one stood by the door. I <laughs> hollered at the one by the door because, you know, I'm, I'm fighting in the bed trying to get away from him, which I thought I was. And I'm hollering at him, don't you dare go down the hall and bother my children. In the meantime, the two at the end of the bed, they're unraveling my legs. It was done and my legs were covered in this brown uh, wrapping, a lot of brown, uh, brown wrapping. And um, they also had <laughs> little black satchels that they brought with them. Mm -hmm. The one by my head was most horrible because I saw only three fingers and he started rubbing his three fingers, doing stuff in my head and on my forehead. What did they look like? They, they had the color of my skin. They had the large pear head, the large almond eyes, slit for a mouth, hardly no nose, no ears. And how tall were they? But they were about maybe four feet, five feet tall. Mm -hmm. And like, were they wearing uh, the same uh, thing? What were they wearing? Were they wearing the same thing or? They were all dressed the same, the very same. I called them at the time afterwards, you know, the ungodly creatures. That's yeah. all I knew was ungodly creatures. Did they have any kind of personality? No, mm -hmm. nothing, nothing was said really they just did their job and there was a reason why and what they took from me but I saw uh, one pulled out this long uh, was like a vial like what I compared it to was like a stomach uh, it was off white it was yeah just off white mm -hmm. And what they with, they stuck a needle into both legs and filling this long tube like apparatus. And the color then changed to like a peach color. Mm. They took that and that carried myself, my mind, everything was focused on that. I don't know what the man, the man, the ungodly creature was doing to my stomach area I don't know uh, the one on my head his hands I mean the fingers were so long and here all the time I thought I was screaming 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 to me I heard my screams mm -hmm. and I heard myself moving I felt myself moving but no no so you were paralyzed do you think I was paralyzed but you know at the time you, you didn't know, mm -hmm. no nothing and then I blacked out. Mm -hmm. Next morning, I was laying a uh, cat corner, cat catawampus on the bed. And my husband comes in, all the blankets, everything, pillows, everything were on the floor. And what happened, Gloria? What, what, what was going on? Have you been in a lot of pain or what? Mm -hmm. And I couldn't tell him, you know, of the hallucination. Mm -hmm. I thought I was hallucinating. Yeah, but you just had it extra strength. You only had Tylenol, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> and from that point on was the very beginning I had thought was my awakening. Uh, from that point on, weekly, I would see orbs, real nice, pretty orbs circling the bedroom wall. And I thought, you know, how soothing. And I guess that would put me to sleep. Were they a different color? What color were they? Uh, they were like the light greens. There was some peach color ones and what have you. But let me back up because this is kind of important. My sister had called the next day after this thin godly creatures were there. Um, on the phone, she, she recognized something quite wrong in my voice. And she kept asking, what is the matter, Gloria? I couldn't tell her. I couldn't tell her. And she kept probing, kept probing. 
So I told her of the hallucination. She says, I'm bringing something for you. So she comes, she came and uh, she's standing in the doorway with her hands behind her back, walks to the bed with her hands behind her back. And she said, I just got to see how you're doing, how you are. And then she pulls out this book, Whitley Streeter's Communion. Oh, 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 oh. She said, are these what came to you last night? And I said, yes. You, you light up like a Christmas tree, oh, right? Oh my God, yeah, yeah. From that point on, um, I think I probably had been taken at least three to four times per week. I would wake up in an unfamiliar place, silver, never saw this, contour walls, lying on a table with these ungodly creatures surrounding me. Large lights, tools that I could not recognize coming down and they were working on my body. Mm. Sometimes they would say, shut up, Gloria, quit your screaming. But I wasn't screaming. I thought I would be screaming too. Wow. Fear and moving around. Don't touch me, leave me alone. Right. Where, where did I give you my permission for this, right? Right, yeah. Waking up several, many, many, many times. One thing would be they would let me have that memory of what transpired on the night they took me. Mm. I became, I thought I was completely insane. Mm -hmm. I became, oh, it was horrific. I didn't want to ever go to bed. I, my husband had a nighttime job well, as well as his daytime job. So I'm it for the two children, you know, mm -hmm. my girls, they're in school, they're at the university, they can't do anything. And it was horrific. It was a horrible life. How long did this go on for? Over a year. How, how, did, your, how did your legs heal? Did they heal? They heal or quickly? Uh, no, no, no. It took time and what I had to go through uh, in the process uh, to get well. It, it took quite a long time. I was laid up maybe for about three months. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but really I had thought, you know, well, I didn't know anything. I didn't think anything. I was just, what are these beans? And my sister and uh, Melissa, they would go to the library. Ruth Montgomery books, more Whitley Stribner books, uh, Bud Hopkins books. Oh, so many books, you know, and I had time to read. So, this is all a lie. It's all a lie. It's not true. It's not true. I'm just insane. And of course, it continued on and on and on. And throughout the years, um, I had been able to meet other human beings on board ship, mm -hmm. uh, families. One particular family, uh, even the mom and the grandpa and grandma were there oh. along with mom and dad and a little girl. The little girl was probably about four or five. And on one experience together with them, the little girl, she was very hungry. So she was crying. She didn't like where she was at. She wanted to go home. I want to eat. So one of the beings, I'm still calling them ungodly creatures mm -hmm. for a lack of knowing. And they brought her out. I think I, I believe I put the drawing in uh, Morning Glory. Uh, it was a roundish bowl and it, the substance was like very sticky uh, oatmeal mm. so her mom was trying to feed her that and it had like oh it, it was very sticky just you know um that family we were able to talk a little bit but 
uh, about maybe 10 years later, because we had seen them periodically, um, I was in a Hallmark shop and lo and behold, here comes the lady with her mother. Huh. And uh, I didn't recognize them right away. They just walked in the door to where I was standing and the young lady just looked, Gloria. Huh. And I said, I didn't recognize her. And they walk over to me and they said, don't you recognize us? Huh. I said, no. And then all of a sudden it came to me on board ship. Yeah. Uh, so that's a relief, isn't it, in a way? that it is in a way. In, in your 3D reality now, it's like, you know, you can't run from that or anything. It's like now you have the second phase of that to deal right. with, right? Yeah. Well, with all this going on, all the many abductions, all, you know, you come home and in my bedroom, in our bedroom, I had this green chair that I would sit in. How in the world did I get all these bruises? And especially around your private areas and lower thighs and what have you, needle marks yep. on my uh, left hand, on the ring finger, I had constant, a triangle. Mm -hmm. Little did I know when I was cleaning the bathroom mirror, my daughter, the youngest one comes in and she just happened to pick up her left hand at the same time and there she has the same triangle. Wow. I started seeing my daughter on board ship too. Mm -hmm. We shared so many, many experiences together. I felt um, nearing Christmas of the, of the first year or the second year, I think it was. I, I've got, you know, with some of the books that I read, I had remembered in Ruth Montgomery's book. Uh, Mr. David Paladin name listed and he wrote some sections in there in her book so I looked in the phone book and sure enough I found a David Paladin I wrote him a letter thinking he'll have compassion he, he might contact me well the end of December his wife sent me a postcard David had just passed away oh she said, I think I may know enough because of what he used to tell me and talk about so much. She had her phone number, so I called, her name was Linda. I called her and we met. She was helpful. And she said, Gloria, you're ungodly creatures. They're extraterrestrials. They come from Oh, she started naming off some various different planets and they're called greys. Oh, for she stuck around. I mean, she was helping us for maybe about six months and then we kind of separated. It was a problem. Uh, in the meantime, David, uh, let's see, uh, Michael Linderman was going to be at the uh, Indian Culture Center mm -hmm. giving a workshop. So Linda took us there, but by the time we got there, which we thought we were getting there early, oh my God, the line was completely around the building. Huh. So we went in and bought a couple of his videos, went home and started viewing his videos. I looked at those videos and I looked at them and I looked at them you know, at different times trying to say, Gloria, you're not insane, but you are insane yet. It didn't help. Well, and you kept this secret to yourself. You didn't talk uh, to your children about it or anyone oh, else about it. My children knew about it because evidently with the anxiety, with everything, I changed. And anything was setting me off. Anger, okay? Which was, um, it was not me. It was not me. My husband, I finally opened up to him at some point. And he at the time liked to play the devil's advocate mm. so i had a very dear friend who thank god she's still here for me today i just opened up to her my brother 
who was a pastor for Nazarene Church, had even told me, I mean, he was calling me constantly, how are you doing, Gloria? I mean, he was such a great support, and my sister as well. Mm -hmm. He knew more, and were more aware to this phenomena that I was, and you'd never believe it. Well, anyway, <laughs> Mr. Michael Linderman came back to the university to give another workshop. And Fred, my husband, said, uh, we're going to go. And I said, yes, I want to go. So that night, we got very good seats, like in the second row. Mr. Linderman, before uh, he gives his talks or anything, he'll go out into the audience and talk to the people. Mm -hmm. well, he passed by our row so many times, and I kept urging Fred, please call him over. Please call him over. I've got to talk to him. And Fred said, no, Gloria, this is something you have to do. Mm -hmm. So it was getting time for him to get up to the stage and give his talk. He passes right in front of me. And I said, Mr. Linderman. <laughs> and I, I, I suddenly just sat quietly. He knew who called him. He looked directly right at me. So he comes over. And I told him, I said, you're going to be talking about something that I have been bothered over the last two years, it was one or two years at the time. And I said, I need help. I need direction. I said, if I finish tonight at 10 o'clock, I want you in the back. We're going to talk. But if uh, it extends to like 11 o'clock, he pulls out his card. He says, Monday morning at 9 o'clock, you call this number. Okay. and we will talk very cool very nice man and i had a horrible weekend it was horrible just in anticipation of a phone call so comes nine o'clock i dialed the number and he knew right away and he said gloria and i said yes and we talked for about an hour and he says do you know mr bud hopkins and i said no i don't he says, here, talk with Debbie. So Debbie was very kind, warm, as well as Mr. Linderman, understanding. Uh, I was so grateful. Yeah. So grateful for them. Uh, Mr. Linderman gets back on the phone and he says, I've talked with Mr. Hopkins. He's waiting for you to call him now. You call me after you talk with Mr. Hopkins. So he gave me the number and I called Mr. Bed Hopkins and shaking in my boots as I call it, because it seems like, you know, your nerves are just going hundred miles an hour and they're going to think I'm crazy. They're going to think I'm so insane. We applaud your courage. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I did. And no, Mr. Hopkins, so very warm, understanding, knowledgeable. Uh, we stayed on the phone probably two hours mm. and he says, uh, we're not done yet. I'm going to be contacting you. And if you happen to have another abduction, you call me right back. Mm. Well, okay, I'm still experiencing three, four nights and having my daughter laying on the next table with these ungodly creature graze around her. And, and it seems like some rooms, you know, you'd see table after table with people laying on them and and graze around them, okay? Uh, over time, because of Mr. Hopkins and Mr. Linderman, uh, Mr. Hopkins, uh, he wanted me to go to New York, and spend two weeks so he could work with me, guide me through hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. And just getting to know the man even more with the compassion, the understanding, the explanations, Drilling and he had his work cut out for him because <laughs> I'm still insane. <laughs> These are just horrific <laughs> hallucinations, <laughs> even though you can feel their touch. Right. You can see gray beans now. Mm -hmm. You can see different sizes beans now. One particular bean. One particular gray was always there. Mm -hmm. Very helpful, always. 
he told me his name and I could never pronounce it, but I always used to call him Raytheon. <laughs> very knowledgeable, very kind, very understanding. And he was always there by my side. Hmm. Uh, was his so job to keep you to feel safe or to feel relaxed or? Yes, 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 yes. And eventually, you know, he would also tell me, you know, it'll be over soon. It's just medical test. But mm -hmm. then when I started seeing, I, I would feel pregnant. But how could I get pregnant? Because I had a hysterectomy. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't understand that. But yet they were working down there and right. they were pulling out little babies. Right. On a man's hand, small babies. Mm -hmm. the size of a man's hand they would bring those little babies to me they want those babies to suckle on you mm -hmm. the first time I wanted to just, just let that that thing go of course that's I know looked human kind of looked a little bit like me but it looked like them too mm -hmm. but then the motherly instinct takes over and you don't want that. You don't want that little baby to go when they come to get it. Huh. Went through many of those. And uh, as time went on, uh, met other human beings. One particular young lady, she chose to be with them. She was probably about 25 years old. Mm. And they wanted me to meet her. Her name was Priscilla. Mm -hmm. And they took me to this large room. The walls are still silver, okay. And up above, there was like a cutout where one of the graves was watching us for some reason, I guess, documenting or trying to see what emotions. I didn't know at the time what he was mm -hmm. looking for. An observer, for she sure. In, yeah. She walks in and she introduces herself and she said, I am also from Albuquerque. Uh -huh. And we, we talked and that's when I found out that, you know, for some reason uh, she was ill and evidently they had promised that they were going to heal her. So, um, so anyway, uh, <laughs> She, in her pocket, she brought it because she knew she was going to be meeting me. Oh. She very secretly pulls out of her pocket this little cameo. It was an old cameo given to her by her grandma. And she told me where she lived, where her folks live. And she said, if you can contact my mom and dad and tell them that I am okay, I'm doing okay. She puts it in my hand tightly. Soon after that, then I was brought home, I guess, because I woke up at some time during the night. It was still dark out. My hands had the nail marks holding that cam cameo so tight. Mm. So I looked at the cameo and I said, my God, they didn't take it away from me. And because I had heard, you know, they don't let you bring anything back. Right, with you. right. Yeah. So somehow, for some reason, they let me bring it back. So I got up and I hid it. And I said, I don't know if they'll find it or not. Uh, a couple of nights later, a couple of the grays came. They were going through my jewelry boxes. They were going through everything. They didn't find it. <laughs> never yay, did. yay. Yeah, yeah. But I was unable to contact her parents as she wanted me to. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, yeah. Um, there have been so many other human beings, you know, that I met. While in New York with Bud, uh, two nights before I was to leave, uh, he had all, he had a group consisted of nothing but alien abductees. And he wanted me to meet him. So that one night he had a gathering 
and they all came. And each one, I mean, with the hugs and with their stories and you're sitting there at all. Right, you're not alone in this. You're not alone. Because I felt so very yeah. alone. Yeah. Even though I had family around me. Oh, I, even where I worked, I mean, nobody, nobody else would know. That was my life secret. Mm -hmm. And just my best friend who kept this life secret with me as well. And uh, since that, you know, uh, Bud's assistant, Christine, uh, who I stayed with, yes, she followed up with me and my daughter with every abduction. Mm -hmm. And she would explain what was going on. And yes, it was for real. And Bud, at the time, there were two ladies here, Becky and, uh, let's see, I forget the other, Carol, Carolyn, um, who were researchers here in Albuquerque. Uh, he got in touch with them and had them come over to the house and we talked. They were always there for me. But yes. through the gathering of people that Bud had, some of those people took it upon themselves to start contacting me too by phone. Yay! It was so very helpful. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is the very beginning. And to acclimate uh, all of that, right? To start yeah. acclimate it instead of stuffing it and get to weave it into some kind of something that you could handle. Yeah, yeah. One negative thing was Bud had me go to this hypnotherapist in Santa Fe, which I did, and to continue on with some of the other abductions. And the hypnotherapist, who was a male, said, I need a psychological test on you, Gloria. And oh. I know a psychiatrist. Yeah, the appointment was made. I went and took the test. Oh, and, uh, and surprise. <laughs> yeah, I have anger management. <laughs> oh, I've got worse than anger management. <laughs> that was the last time I saw him. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. but and I, we continued with contact. And, you know, he would come to Roswell during the July festivals in Roswell. And uh, we began a, a friendship with he and his wife, Carol. And uh, he began to stay all the time that he would come to Albuquerque at our house. And um, there we would talk, very informative. I mean, he became a great teacher as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned a lot from him. Uh, very kind, very compassionate, um, a great friend, a great friend. Mm -hmm. He was always there and helping my family as well. Over time, yes, I, I got rid of the insaneness. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> sitting here, yeah, I know, sitting in that darn green chair. <laughs> three, four times wondering, you know, oh my God, what they do to me now? Look at all the marks and, you know, the bruises and right. the needle marks and, you know, all that. Finally, um, do you have any photos of any of that by any chance? I do, but, you know, I did put them in uh, Morning Glory and they didn't come yeah. out. Yeah, Christine at the time said, uh, well, she wanted to see some photos. And which the photos were a lot clearer. But then when I gave them to the printer company mm -hmm. to, you know, put them in the book, mm -hmm. you can't even hardly tell. Blood. I used to wake up so many times with bloody, bloody noses. My, my pillow would be completely full of blood. Yeah. Or one time uh, the light, a bedroom light was still on. And I woke up and there was these ungodly looking little black bugs on the side of my bed mm -hmm. and I woke Fred up you know they would always paralyze him of course they would always paralyze him yeah and why don't they take both of you but they just take one yeah That's yeah yeah so anyway I got him up and 
yeah, the bugs were fast crawling. They like disappeared. I mean, it was so odd. He saw them and they just like disappeared. Mm -hmm. And I got up, yeah, you know, looking at my gown. Yeah. <laughs> Do I have them on me or what would I bring home, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, over time, um, yeah, I'm still experiencing three, four nights, you know, with various different things. Uh, Ray, uh, Raytheon was allowed to take me to labs where I, uh, they were like um, cubicles, a wall full of cubicles with some kind of fluid in them. Mm -hmm. There I saw body parts, human body parts, alien body parts, little tiny fetuses of hybrid babies. Mm -hmm. Then they introduced me to a hybrid daughter, to two hybrid daughters. Oh my goodness. One was Winshaw. Oh. And the other little girl, I, I I I can't remember her name, what I used to call her. Uh -huh. uh, the reason now was because of the little girl. She was probably about three years old. Because of my DNA, she assumed the post uh, the polio that I had when uh -huh. I was. 12 years old she got it and they mm -hmm. could heal her and that was the reasoning why they came on that night and uh, took what they took from me because they thought you know in giving it to her mm -hmm. to help her uh seeing this poor little girl hybrid little girl talking about hybrids um you hear them telepathically as well when they talk to you. Of course. But when Shaw, one time, I, I took a comb with me. They allowed me to take a comb, and I knew I was going to see her because the hair is thin, wired, <laughs> never been washed. They smell. Huh. They don't know how to bathe or anything. They smell. They have body odor. So I was trying to comb her hair. And it was so naughty, so dirty. So, you know, I just wanted to see her look pretty. So she goes, uh, uh. I knew she had a voice. I said, what did you say? Uh, you know, I began to teach her our language mm. and, and to talk. That was a challenge that she learned how to talk. That's amazing. Um, do, do you think that they took you to maybe because of your medical background that seeing sort of a medical environment, you were kind of used to that? No, it is genetic. It's, it's genetic. genetic. Okay. It is genetic and it had, it's ongoing. There's some family generation, 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 generational. Right? And yes, uh, what my brother had found out, uh, there was a uncle mm. and we knew of this, we did not know of this uncle because his immediate family felt he was crazy. Huh. They built just a small little cubicle room, no windows, no nothing. And they kept this man in that room. Not like My the brother went and interviewed these two amps. Mm -hmm. And did he, oh, he comes back home with a big smile on his face. So Bud and I talked about it and uh, yeah, a research was going on. Uh, Bud was pretty close to uh, um, John Mack. Yes, yeah. I got to meet John Mack. They're both like the foundation of, of all of this, right? Yeah. You get to yeah. be with both of the, the, the amazing visionaries of all of mm -hmm. this. Yeah, so I, I finally got to meet John Mack in person as well. And uh, when I became a hypnotherapist, yeah. I worked with John Mack through the peer group. Fantastic. Which was great. Yes, yes. So, um, and we could go back to your daughter. I'm sorry, you're combing her hair. It's yeah. funny that you say that because when I've been on the ship before, they like to comb my hair. 
Oh, they do? Yes. Oh, isn't that great? <laughs> they have a comb. Yeah. <laughs> isn't that great? <laughs> they love it long, and so they like to comb it. It makes me yeah. happy. Makes them happy. That's one of the things that we do. Oh, isn't that great? <laughs> Well, the little one, my little hybrid daughter, one experience was when they took me up, <clears throat> Raytheon, Raytheon was always there for me. And they took me to this other room and they had this high tub, very high tub. It was probably four feet tall. And it had one end, had a slide like mm -hmm. to it into the water. I put my hand in the water and it wasn't water. And it was like very oily. It was, it was weird feeling. Like jello-y? Yeah, like, like jello. Um, no, it looked almost like water. It had a tinge to it, tinge of color. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, they brought my little girl in, put her on the slide. She saw me. She, oh, she had a voice too. <laughs> She started screaming. She was screaming, screaming. Two of the greys, you know, had her by her under her arms and they wanted to put her in the solution. And they did eventually put her in the solution. But she was, oh, she, I, I cried. I cried. And then they pulled her back out. And I believe that was the last time I saw her because the next time they took me, um, they told me she passed. Yeah. And then when Winshaw is the one that told me that mm. she passed. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, when we were about to go on a break. Okay. We'll take a break in just a few minutes and we'll be, uh, that breaks like six or seven minutes till after four minutes after the hour. Okay. And so, um, I mean, I could just listen to you forever. I mean, this is <gasps> Thank you so much for sharing. And it's so personal, right? It's like a, such a personal experience and to, it takes courage to even now to, to share it with everybody. We really, really appreciate it. It's a lot easier now. It's a lot easier. I think after you tell it a hundred times, right? That's yes, right. The first time I told my story, I threw up, okay? So <laughs> I couldn't oh, go. And then oh, <laughs> I was crying. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. So after about a thousand times, you got it down pretty good, you know. Right, yeah. <laughs> but let's can you show our audience your books? I, I really yeah. want you to, to really read your books and and mm -hmm. the details of this that. This is the first book, mm -hmm. Morning Glory Diary of an Alien Abductee. And that was written in 2005. Uh, 2001. Oh, 2001. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it was published in 2001. Okay. Yes. And it's available on Amazon.com. Amazon. Yes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, for me, uh, Barnes and Noble, uh, any bookstore. Okay. My understanding is now with the book. I'll take care of that later. Uh, okay. Any bookstore, if you ask for the books now, they used to be on bookshelves. Okay. But my understanding is now they've taken a lot of the books, uh, paranormal books off their shelves, and you have to ask, you have to request it. Oh, that's a lot of people are getting it now. Yes. Yeah. And this is the second Morning Glory. Yeah, that one. Uh, ever after. The story continues. Yeah, that one's just gorgeous. And that yeah. one was published when? Uh, two, 2015. 2015. Yes, yes. And, and why did you use the subject Morning Glory on the for the covers? This... Ever this... since I can remember, everybody used to call me, hi, Morning Glory. Huh. That's lovely. And when I, <laughs> I never thought I'd be an author to tell my story without so many people were on me. Gloria, you have got so much to say. And then I figured if it can help at least one abductee right. to read what I have gone through, if it can help just one, mm -hmm. then it will be worth my story getting out like this. Yep. And thank you. And we'll be right back thank after you. this break, everybody. Okay. And um, don't go anywhere. I don't won't. Anybody. Uh, you can't go ahead and go and 
Can I need some water. Something and come back. Will this hurt if I put my my phone so it doesn't ring? Yeah, it'd be great if it didn't ring. Yeah. Can I just go ahead and turn it on? Busy signal? Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay, it won't hurt the program. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. But you st we're still live, so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me go get some water real quick. Yes. Yeah, I'll talk about the other aliens or extraterrestrials I've met, but I'm being too wordy. I always get too wordy. You're doing beautifully, beautifully. Oh, am I? Okay. Okay, thank you. Be right back. <laughs> My kitty was trying to get in too. <laughs> Radio station. 
station is programmed and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who express them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listeners with supported radio, and now we return <laughs> <laughs> Always reminds me of riding a horse. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to the Cosmic Oracle Show. This is your host, Barbara Jean Lindsay, and we're having an amazing time. I mean, Gloria Hawker is our guest this evening. She's the author of A Morning Glory Diary of an Alien Abductee, and her second book, Morning Glory. The story continues, and she is writing a third book as well. And so we want to thank you for keeping us on the air. So go to freedomslips.com. That's freedomslips.com. Hit that donate button and give, 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 and thank you in advance. And so welcome back to the show, Gloria. I mean, you've just told us thank some you. amazing uh, stories, experiences that are true stories, and and um, or your relationship and how it's starting to just kind of move then from the extreme, uh, God, what do you do with that to, to yeah. now you're working with it. And, and, and now, I mean, are you still getting abducted on a weekly, nightly basis or how often? Since my husband passed in 2005, that's another story there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, it, Right after his passing, about three months later, it seemed like it began to slow down. Mm -hmm. And it got slower and slower. I felt relieved, but I said, you know, what's going on? Where are you? Uh, because I was accepted. I then that's another story okay how I was accepted at freedom oh, I'd love to hear uh, that story yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um it seemed like they disappeared and it got so quiet and I said my gosh after all these years uh, it feels so odd uh the reality the quietness nothing happening at night or during the day with them uh, getting and adjusting to normal life was so hard for me mm -hmm. to finally relax in bed right have an out breath right you get yeah. to like an out breath and, and, and to get sleep decent sleep and you wake up did i go anywhere Sometimes I would wake up. Yeah, they had me last night. I remember something. Sure enough, needle marks or bruises. Mm -hmm. No memory. I'm one, I don't know how many people to come home to wake up the next morning with full memory of what transpired mm -hmm. over the night time with them for however many hours, normally two hours, three hours that they would keep you. And to wake up, you know, with no memory, but yet something is telling you, yes, you were taken last night, but that was a rarity now. Um, one night I, yeah, with the memory that they did allow me to have, I'm sure you've heard of the Pontes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Who reside in the Sandia Mountains. Yeah, we've had um, Reverend Otter and Sue. Yes. The show. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Well, I had to contact her right away because I didn't know <laughs> where I was at. And <laughs> she's amazing. Uh, They're both amazing. Yes, yes, they are. They are. And uh, that experience with, with the Pontes. Um, I was inside this huge cavern and evidently they got me there one night in a ship, a small ship, because I remember getting out of the small ship and there were several other small ships and 
the place where they kept the ships was huge. And walking with, I called them grays. You know, I didn't know they, they were grays to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And later I learned, you know, through Sue Pontes, okay. And walking me down this long, long, dark hallway, there was light coming from someplace, like the light in the ship, you know, you don't see, you don't see ceiling lights, you don't see lamps or anything like that. Like filtered, like a layered filter of yeah, light. Yeah, yeah. And it comes out like from the sides. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's lit, the whole area is lit, but you don't know where the light comes from. Right, exactly. And the same there uh, in the Sandias. Well, when I met this um, male, uh, Ponte, uh, he was very friendly. He told me that he was a hybrid son of mine. <laughs> but Sue says no. But I don't know. Uh, the second time I saw him, he still says, you know, he was a hybrid son. He looks more of a Ponte of a gray. They look like grays. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. They resemble the grays, but they, you have to call them Pontes. Um, yeah, we talked for quite a long time, very friendly, and other Pontees would walk by. There was one particular uh, lady Pontee. They're about the same size as, same size as the greys mm -hmm. and different sizes, okay? Um, I don't remember seeing any humans there. Uh, anyway, uh, he told me his name was Yart. Mm. And he says, I want to show you what, what kind of work I do here. So he walks me into this other section and there was tables and the, on these tables, they were like six foot long tables, but they were just long, long tables. Okay. There were rocks, different colored of rust with veins of uh, beige or off white through the rocks. There were different rocks. And he said, these rocks are mined here, even on the Sandias or all the way down south, Talamagordo, White Sands, the ships bring them in. Uh, he did not tell me how it was processed, yeah. or he didn't even show me how they convert these rocks, these special rocks, into fuel mm -hmm. for all these small ships. Wow. And that's his job. Wow. Plus, what Sue. Walker had told me that he likes to go out of the cavern. You want to say cavern uh, because it's huge. It's huge in there. And he loves butterflies. Okay. Well, when I called her, the first time I called her, uh, I was telling her about it. And she said, she's an artist, you know, mm -hmm. she does her drawings. And she says, I am doing a drawing of one Ponte right now, and I don't know who he is, but what you're telling me, she said, I'm gonna send you the picture right away. She sent me the picture. She said, I'm not done with it, but oh my gosh, what really got to me with big brown eyes. He's got brown eyes uh -huh. and small lips. And I said, that's your, that's my hybrid son. <laughs> and she said I'm not done with him and um, when she finished painting the picture she put a butterfly on his nose oh he that's adorable butterflies. he loves butterflies <laughs> um, I haven't lived, like I said probably just twice I have been with him physically but uh it was last October, it was still very warm here in Albuquerque. And I keep my balcony door open upstairs, okay, at night. I was reading a book this one night. Something said, put the book down and look out through the screen door. Mm -hmm. I did. We are in the pathway of airlines at, from 1030 on. Uh, that will come not directly over the house, mm -hmm. you know, Delta, Southwest Airlines, what have you. So I'm kind of used to that. Well, okay. 
I'm sitting there, okay. Out of the east comes the strange object because it had like four very bright lights in a circular pattern and it stops, dead stop. It's, it can't be an airplane. I mean, that is so weird. Then all of a sudden it drops, maybe a hundred feet, it drops. I mean, it was very close to my house. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh my God, that airplane's gonna crash. So I <laughs> jumped up and I went outside where it stopped. He kind of went sideways to the west and then back up a hundred feet. And I'm in my mid, I have a very long balcony. Mm -hmm. By the time I got to the edge of the balcony and I saw him as quick, I mean, in seconds, just oh, seconds. God. And I heard, I said, hey, come back. <laughs> I want to come and see you. Come and get me. <laughs> now that's and, a total change, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I said, I heard, we just stopped to say hello. Oh. <laughs> In my head, I heard. That's awesome. We just stopped to say hello. Oh. Last week, it was a Saturday night, southeast of my home. I sometimes would call these ships diamonds in the sky because sometimes, you know, when they flash their lights, mm -hmm. it looks real pretty like a diamond. Right, okay. right. Yeah, they were there again. And I called my friend who lives east of me, uh, about maybe five miles east of me. And I asked her, go outside if you want, to see if you can see it. No, she couldn't see it. But an, they stayed there for about an hour. Uh -huh. and, and then they left. I didn't get to see which direction they left. Uh -huh. So they're still around. Yay. Saying hi. <laughs> Yeah. Can we talk about, there was a, a part where I liked uh, in your book about where you worked with them, we kind of started it, and uh, where you worked with the, um, with the greys on um, some kind of work in the, a lab in lab. the, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, this lab, uh, I believe was in the mothership. Mm -hmm. uh, two ladies also that we became, because we were sitting right close to each other on this table with microscopes, mm -hmm. um, using a product, which I was told that has not been discovered here on our earth, mm -hmm. but they have this product available to them and it's called K-Lite. Mm -hmm. And um, it comes very, very deep, they said, within our earth. And maybe one day it'll be discovered, but that's what they use. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this product can be turned into uh, biowarfare mm -hmm. or used for medical purposes. Uh, medical purposes like pandemic. Mm -hmm. Okay, now self-doubt they have this product and which i work with under a microscope that we were given in the little cups you know to work with um and i was told medical to cure cancer to cure disease viruses come on guys look what we're going through right now mm-hmm is it the truth? I don't believe you now because you're not doing anything to help us. Mm -hmm. We worked and worked with this product and um, at times, you know, the suits that the astronauts wear, mm -hmm. we were dressed in white suits completely. They were white, working with human beings. Mm -hmm. The scientists, some that I recognized, mm. okay? There was astronauts there as well. Well, anyway, we would be dressed in these suits. 
and I can still hear like the fan, you know, oxygen, air, mm -hmm. and the head part of it. And um, there was the Asians there as well, different cultures sitting around this long table doing their various work as well, along with the extraterrestrials, different extraterrestrials or human beings, a lot of scientists, human beings working with this product. Were there several different species of extraterrestrials? Oh yeah, yeah. Extraterrestrials that I got to know along my journey uh, of abductions, which were uh, the praying mantis, the mantis mm -hmm. group. How do you uh, feel about them? Yeah, they're, they're gentle. They're gentle, very kind, very knowledgeable. Hi highly intelligent, right? Yes, very, very. Um, I call them the twi uh, tall whites. Mm. Oh, they're beautiful. I don't even, I, I call them humans. They're about seven feet tall, both male and female. They look human. Have mm. you met them? Well, I've only seen the ones with the, the tall white robes without a face. No, they, they look human. I call them the whites. Okay. Um, they came or they come from Orion group. Mm. That's what I was told by them. When I first met the male, um, <laughs> he was dressed like Paul Bunyan. <laughs> and yeah, Raytheon and this other gray female walked me to this cubicle to this room that had cubicles, like dressing rooms in a department store, okay. and put me into this cubicle and closed the door. And then later on, I hear um, a heavy, deep, loud voice, like with another alien bringing him into another cubicle. Well, then the female alien came and got me and said, they're ready for you. I didn't know what was gonna happen to me. What did she look like? What did she? She said, they're ready for you, so come with me. So anyway, I'm walking. I mean, it was very, there was maybe about six cubicles and um, like a square. And I was at the end cubicle with the door closed and she came to get me. So I had to walk down the center and I looked up and oh my God, here is this human standing there and he's so tall so he he knew me hi gloria how, how tall was he okay at that point i thought he was right about eight feet tall yeah that's really <laughs> i mean i was looking no really about seven feet okay but yes. first meeting you know oh, yeah. ink okay <laughs> uh but he had dark blackish hair but shoulder length blue eyes and he was dressed as Paul Bunyan. <laughs> so that was his name. It stuck with him. He was always there when they woke me up, you know, when you arrived on board ship, because mm -hmm. you're still like in a very sleep mode right, you're in a state mm -hmm. when you arrive and then they wake you up right away. Mm -hmm. He and Raytheon were always, always there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if you can picture what Paul Bunyan, the way he's yeah. dressed, Exactly. I drew a picture of him in the book. <laughs> and yeah, I got to meet some of the females. And yes, a lot of them have the blonde hair. They're beautiful people. Mm -hmm. Good skin, blue eyes, very, very knowledgeable, very friendly, very kind. They're lovable people. Would you call them, describe them as the Nordics as we see kind of the Nordics? Yeah, Nor Nordics. Nordics. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they are the Nordics, yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Yes, mm -hmm. it's going away. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I, I'm gonna, you know, a girl thing. So what did they have you dressed in? Just a gown or just your, what did they put I, you in? My pajamas. Oh, your pajamas. Yeah, yeah, just whatever, my pajamas. That's the way they always take me. Except for <laughs> time when they took me, I was coming home from work. Would you believe on a freeway? Oh, by the car? One of my questions, because they only seem to take you at night. Did they take you any other time? So in yes, I'm glad you are saying that. Yes. In the daytime. Yeah. How they how do they do that, right? And yeah. they take you back in the car and that time's just gone, right? Yeah. 
I was traveling, going home from work, from university hospital. I was mm -hmm. going home um, on the freeway around 5.30, 5, 5.30. And freeways, you know how busy, bumper to bumper. Right. How right. did they, nobody, I saw no articles, nothing. They, they, they said that the car just lifted up. Yeah. I was on board. I, ship. I was awake. Do you know Ray Hernandez at all? Have you? He's with the free, one of the co-founders of the free organization. Oh. And, and that's how he, he was driving on the freeway and they whoop, just him too? Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, because I don't understand. I got home at seven o'clock. My husband was home. He was making dinner. The kids were home. The two younger children were home. Big eyes, where have you been? Oh, oh, oh. I said, well, I've, I didn't know. I said, I've been coming home. Do you know what time it is? No, but it's a little bit darker out. <laughs> <laughs> I left work at my normal time. Wow, so you had missing time. Yeah. How much time? A couple hours or? Well, from five to seven, I got home at seven o'clock. Wow. Wow. Yeah, go figure. I don't know. And it still stumps me today, you know. Mm -hmm. Bum traffic was bumper to bumper. How did they do it? Yeah, they I I'm not sure how they do it, but they definitely do it. You're not yeah. a lot of stories like that. So weird. So, true stories, you know. Their technology is mm -hmm. so, you know, because the pres all of our presidents since what Truman era. Right. And worldwide, kings, queens, presidents of each country have signed an agreement with them, with the Federation, mm -hmm. to allow abductions for technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we were sold like goods, right? Yeah. Look at technology. Mm -hmm. how, how quickly a lot of our technology, especially in computers, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, when you started this back in the day, there were no computers. Oh, my husband, we, he, yeah, that was our business, his business. So and then now, we, you know, information can be like, you yeah, know, yeah, so thank goodness yeah. for that. And then, no, no. So look at that. I mean, not just that, but even with medical, you know, mm -hmm. some cancers are being healed. I mean, oh, th there's just so much advancement in a lot of our technology mm -hmm. because we've had a lot of help from our friends. Yeah. <laughs> or the friends. find agreements from each country, each president, each king, queen, anybody, mm -hmm. you know, who is leading the countries have signed these agreements. So alien abduction is just not here in the United States. It's worldwide. Yep. It's worldwide. And, and, and do you think in the United States, maybe it is a worldwide thing. It, um, are they looking for a certain background? You know, do you have to be a certain genetic program in you that they're looking for? I think it's the bloodline, just the bloodline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why and where it started, I don't know. My understanding is like at the very beginning oh. of, our, of creation here on our mm -hmm. world, on our earth. Mm -hmm. And do you ever uh, think a part of you was in agreement to this at all, ever now looking back over the 30 years or when this started, you know, 25 years? Because they lost how. They lost their emotion of what Raytheon told me, the world, the planet, he and his generation came from. They got too smart for the riches and blew up the world. Mm -hmm. And before that happened, only a few were able to escape. Plus, I don't know how true this is now, Okay, Mars. And I've heard a lot, been told by a lot of researchers, you know, a lot of them landed in March. 
in, in Mars mm -hmm. and uh, Saturn, and they were underground. Uh, therefore, they lost, they used to have some kind of emotions. They used to have togetherness. They used to have, they want what we have, what we seem to have. And what is it that we have that they're after? Emotions, yeah. love, togetherness. But look at our world today. Look we need that. that. We need that now here as well. Yeah. <laughs> so we yeah. need it <laughs> off planet and on planet right now. Yeah. So you think you're yeah. part of that work maybe of telling that story, right? Or yeah but with their hybrids and with each so-called, well, each mother of a hybrid, yes, they're allowed to go up and yeah. be with their hybrid. Do you think the yeah. future is that they're gonna be able to come off the ship and be just be walk among us? Or are they walking among us now already? Um, some, like the Nordics are already here. Mm -hmm which I can testify. Um, I have a very dear friend who lived in Colorado and oh my gosh, her story is truly amazing. He's a hybrid hmm. and he had them. He's trying to live as a human being, even though he's a little bit taller. He invited her and her husband over to his house he had a very small house and they walked in no furniture just some weird objects <laughs> oh her story was very amazing what she told me one day i was driving down one of the main streets there in central avenue mm -hmm. we had a van ford van you know, they sit quite tall. Right. Two of them crossing the street and they're looking at me. Mm hmm Yes, there's supposed to be some here already. Uh, yes, they, what I had been told when I was being abducted, you know, those many nights, and when they finally, when the infamous gray doctor and I came to a medium, life changed for me on board ship. Mm -hmm. And he, he treated me as a human being with respect. Right, you developed trust. some trust, it looks like. Yeah. Some trust. I mean, we were nothing but lab rats to him. Mm -hmm. And you felt like a lab rat after so many times. Right. Nothing but a lab rat. But then when he in this, I used to call him the doctor, the mean doctor. Mm -hmm. was no respect, no, no regard for human life for us. But until we came to that medium, which had to do with God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Higher power. That's when life changed for me on board ship. Oh. And I had freedom. That's when I began learning. When they would teach me about bio warfare, bio, the medical. But again, I wake up, it's daytime, daytime, and nighttime, mostly nighttime. I Angelina and Grace and I, along with familiar faces from onboard ship, are sitting in a gray block building, which is highly guarded with men in camouflage, inside with heavy machine guns, outside with heavy machine guns. Our teachers had brown, I think it's, uh, I used to think it was Air Force uniforms because that's the color my husband used to wear when we were Air Force. Mm -hmm. 
with the white lab jackets, very strict, very controlling. And I was accused one time of talking. They don't want you to talk. You're paid for it. Someone in your family or you will die or something bad will happen. If you talk. And, and this is during a my, this is a my lab story, right? Different yes. than, and, and I don't want to stop because I want to hear the rest of this story, but I also, can you tell our listeners what the difference is with the my lab? What's a my lab abductee? Okay. My labs, you are abducted by high profile governments, mm -hmm. your own government. Again, uh, abductees come from all over the world and are abducted by military personnel or high profile within their governments mm -hmm. to learn what you know because you're working with them up in the labs. Right. What do you know? Give us the secret. Give us the the information. Again, more shots, mistreatment. That is the reasoning for the cinder block mm. building and why I was accused of talking, which I was not. I had not been talking. They gave me a shot in my tongue, which- Your tongue? Yes, and my oh, tongue swelled so high, I thought I had cotton in my mouth. There was blood coming out. I went into, they took me to the bathroom. The bathroom, oh, it was filthy, old bathroom. The mirror was so clouded, it was old. You couldn't even hardly see, but I wanted to see what was happening, where's the blood coming from? And I could barely see, and I saw, my mouth had to open because the tongue swelled so bad. And then uh, they broke the door because I, I thought I was going to be able to escape. <laughs> escape mm -hmm. where? Because I don't, we really think we were on Kirtland Air Force Base mm -hmm. really because of the directions, because of where, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they broke, one of the guards broke the, the door in. They grabbed me and threw me back into my chair. And um, the head teacher there said, take her to unit something, something, you know, it's just, it's pretty close by, get her into the Jeep and have Angelina and Grace go with her too, get them out of here. And yeah, you know, the, the men in camouflage with the machine guns walked us to this Jeep and poor Grace, you know, they made her get in cause they're trying to hold me up. Cause I, I became very, very weak. Mm -hmm. and I really thought I was going to die and um, well anyway they made Grace get in first so she's over here pulling me up and Angelina is helping me up and then the guard just came and just get up there you know so it was Grace and then I was in the middle and then Angelina on the side and they I passed out they they took us someplace to give me an antidote and then I woke up at home. In your bed. And how was your tongue? Oh, for that whole week. Pain. It was very painful. It hurt. The mouth hurt. The teeth hurt. The whole tongue area. Just It was very painful. I could hardly eat. I could hardly talk. Oh. It was bad. So uh, other military, you know, I identified my high-profile military um, people. And in the book, I drew pictures of them. And I said, Mrs. A, Mrs. C, or whatever, OK? Excuse me. And um, at that point in time, you would know who they were. And uh, Mr. C, he was the most kindest one and apologetic to me for what had been happening to me, what they had been doing to me because they wanted to be the first 
They want to be first in the world. Many people, I lost a very dear friend uh, when you're in mill lab. Oh, they put you through holograms, the drugs, the drugs, the drugs. Uh, mistreatment. The is hurting. Try uh, to shatter you, right? To kind of compartmentalize you. Is that the. Yeah. The worst, and it still hurts me a lot, the human hurting another human. Right. The man's inhumanity to man. Right. And what they threaten you with. And I still believe today they took my husband. Mm -hmm. They killed him. And why do you think that? He was... I think the last year of his life, he became an abductee as well. And oh. he always wanted to talk about it or tell me about it. Some things he could, some other things he couldn't. Um, with computers and his position, not having, well, he had a clearance of Q and we would go up to Los Alamos. I mean, he was always at Los Alamos or on base. And Los Alamos in the area that we were in, we had to go through, we had to park our car way out in a parking area. Jeeps would come and pick us up. And they also would have, you know, the machine guns and what have you. They take us to one sight another group of men would get in the jeep and then drive us to the destination the clearance there was higher than a queue mm. what i saw there with i have no clearance mm -hmm. no clearance period how was i allowed to get in there now i i saw a little gray one time I saw some things that I recognized in the commander's office there. How was I allowed in this high clearance? And just because we sold computers to them and because of the people I saw there and what they were saying and what these people do, how was I allowed? Maybe you have a, another clearance that we don't know of, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I should have. I think <laughs> so. I, I should have time on the ship. <laughs> yeah. You've earned their respect. Maybe you get like a get out of jail free card. It's kind of like <laughs> that, you know? Right. Yeah. 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 You I don't respect. know, you know? Mm. But there I was weekly, sometimes twice a week in that same area. And the people that I got to meet, and it was very astounding. Huh. One time the president was there. They had a separate room. They were having a meeting. Mm -hmm. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Very, yeah. And um, that, that part still, sometimes I still wonder if I see a strange car parked in front of my house now, yet today. Mm -hmm. chills go through me right you know and, and that's that's warranted all right it's yeah. like a ptsd and yeah. about, it, it is still it's still there because um it's out of your control apparently right yeah, you can't right. control any of this yeah but nobody has bothered me nobody mm -hmm. so yeah. ever since the passing of my husband and the way, you know, even with the extraterrestrials, all of them, it just seems, you know, like each month, each week, mm -hmm. just got more quieter and more quiet. And it got to the point, I miss Raytheon. I miss my infamous doctor. I miss seeing, you know, the people I affiliated with up there. Right, right. You know? Well, yeah. you spent so much of your time there. It's, yeah. it becomes, a more of a reality than this reality right. sometimes, right? That's true. Very true. Yes. Yes. 
Yeah. And then what do you do with this reality? Like, oh yeah, I'm I am here. <laughs> yeah, I'm here and it's quiet. Oh my gosh, I get to see my grandkids in peace. Well, that, I can have them over. My kids are coming over more now. You know. <laughs> I know I always say I came back because of my three kids at the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only reason I came back. Is that the only reason you came back? Yeah, it was for so, my three children at the time. It was last year. Uh, this other good friend, he and his wife, um, he is, uh, he meditates a lot, but there's another word that he does in communication, okay? And Raytheon, for some reason, well, knew about Gabriel and contacted Gabriel while he was in meditation. Oh, I love that. And uh, Raytheon introduced himself to Gabriel and told him about me and what have you. Gabriel and Sheila knew my, knows my story, okay? Uh -huh. So um, anyway, uh, Raytheon said that he has heard me talk about why haven't they come to get me anymore. Mm. And that uh, he's heard me say that I really miss him. And I really want to see Winshaw. Well, he told Gabriel, we cannot legally he didn't use uh, legally. Let's see, what was the word? I've got it typed out. Gabriel typed it out for me. Uh, I can't remember the word. They can no longer come and get me anymore because my government said that they cannot abduct Gloria anymore. They cannot take Gloria anymore. Is that because your contract expired or? I don't know. I don't know. But um, he also in, told Gabriel that Gabriel wrote out, it's up to Gloria. If she wants to come and be with us, she is welcomed. Oh, how did that make you feel? It made me feel good. And I thought about it. But this is my family down here right you know uh, this is my family yeah yeah i my, I, children, my sister my brother my, right, my relatives, right. cousins i i i feel you on that i you know i uh had a signed up to have a one to go to mars i thought that could be really fun and i said oh yeah, yeah i know yeah. right and so I, and it was just playful on my part. And then when it came that it's a one-way ticket to Mars, I yeah. said, well, I can't go because of my love for my children and my grandchildren. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not going to do it. But you know what happened the next day? Mm -mm. Okay, well, Gabriel called me right after that incident. And he said, I'm typing it out for you and I'll get it to you. So, which he did. So anyway, that morning, I'm sitting combing my hair. And I'm saying, well, Raytheon, uh, let's see, what was it? Well, Raytheon, you haven't come to, and I haven't seen you in a long, long time, like always, like what Gabriel said. And yes, you're around somehow to hear me. I guess I have, in oh, implants, implants. Mm -hmm. That's another thing, okay? Oh, yes. <laughs> so I'm looking directly into the mirror. It's a large, large mirror in my bathroom. And the mirror somehow transposed to like I was looking at TV. Uh -huh. I don't know how it was done. Uh -huh. but it was like a lot of little scattery lines started appearing in the mirror. And I, I had to shake my head because it's my eyes, you know, creating this. Right. Oh, then Raytheon appeared so very clear. Huh. And he said, hi, Gloria. And I said, Raytheon, hi. <laughs> and so we talked for a little bit. And I, I asked him, I said, how's Winshaw? I said, I miss her so much. And uh, he says, she's here. <gasps> I'll talk to her. So he waves her over. 
and she's there. Oh my goodness. Mom, mom. <laughs> she looked, her hair was combed. Mm. And if she bathes, I don't know if they bathe yet or not, but yeah. Right. Right. She looked neat. And she says, Mom, guess what? And I said, What? She says, You're a grandmother. I'm a grandmother. And she said, Yes, they've made it me with other human men and then some hybrids. So wow. she says, You have some hybrid, your grandmother. Wow. And I said, Well, what are you doing now? Do you, are you working or what's your life like? Mm -hmm. She said, Mom, you taught me I'm a teacher. Oh, <laughs> said, I'm, I'm teaching all these hybrid children. Oh, my God. She said, yeah. Some have voices, and some we're teaching them how to use. Wow. Wow. Isn't that something? How did that, how that, did that just overwhelm you with joy? Yeah. I mean, I, oh, yes. <laughs> and they're both standing there, and Raytheon is, <laughs> you know, looking at her. and. I, I was just in awe. I mean, am I really proud. like a proud no. mama moment, right? Yeah, yeah. And then Raytheon says, we've got to go now. So it just like the mirror came back. Mm -hmm. The reflection of me, you know, the mirror. Mm -hmm. I don't know how the technology, but yeah. Right. But yeah. I think probably just hold it for that long or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's I don't know how many grandchildren I've got up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah. Wow. That's quite an evolution for you. And yeah. for us, there's so many yeah. like you, right? Yeah. How, oh, and you, so many, yes. Right. right. Yeah. And that we, so it's not just you. It's like no. thousands and thousands and thousands. Oh, oh my gosh, yes. I mean, the people I have met, mm -hmm. you know, who are abductees. Uh, within, I became a hypnotherapist, you know, like I said, you know, right. back. All because of Bud Hopkins and what he did and right. how it grew. And I, I tried telling myself, I can do the same thing here too with my clients. Right, exactly. And I've had so many clients who feel like they're alone. Right, so you yeah. can help them. Mm -hmm. So what I started doing was, you know, if I have a client with the same experiences, with the same extraterrestrials, I will pair them up and they can become, because it was done to me, mm -hmm. you know. And after every abduction that each one will experience, they call each other to, to, to soothe, to help, to share, to right. give a hug. Right. You know? Yeah. And let to it validate, to validate. validate. You just right. need to be heard and validated. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then you yeah. can work it within your mind and your reality. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I have learned from like each one of them over the years, you know, they'll, they'll be sitting in my chair and, you know, I'm guiding them. And I said, my God, that just sounds so familiar to me, you know? So I learned from them. But then other times, I mean, oh, so many are so open-minded. Right. So yeah. many humans are open-minded and they come to me being open-minded that's my phone oh, it is okay yes yeah. well and so when you began your story totally closed down and now you're working and helping people open their minds right, right. yeah yeah the i had many who are closed-minded as well like i was okay yeah and to bring them to where they can understand no, you are not insane. You are right. not insane. Right. And oh, what they go through. I, I have them drawing pictures. They have to draw pictures for me. Mm -hmm. And it helps them. Mm -hmm. And um, over the years, it's truly amazing. And um, oh, I had one client, male, that I worked with almost a year. And he was a male lab. 
Mm-hmm. What he really went through was just horrific. And um, it was verified because of, he was working with an organization on the west side of our state of New Mexico. Mm-hmm. And he had confirmation. He had people who were not even abductees um, attest. They saw. They saw what was happening to him. They saw who took him. They saw the helicopters. Mm. They saw the military. And military, there's a couple of military bases up there that move from section to section for their secrecy their right. privacy and what happened there. This poor man, what he has gone through, he finally decided with help, he wouldn't tell me who the help was, how he, um, I think I did speak with John Mack and I know I mentioned it to, to Bud and I don't know if it was because of their help or through channels, Mm -hmm. finally reached to him. He said, I can't tell you, Gloria, on his last visit, he came and he said, I'm I'm telling you goodbye. And I'm just telling you, I'm going back east. That's all I can tell you. Mm -hmm. And what they have done to this poor man and his brain, what he can do with his brain. Mm -hmm. They were taking him back east. And he called me when he got there just to say that he was safe Mm -hmm. and he trusts where he is at. And they said they were going to help him. But his story is truly amazing. Is that going to be in your new book? Uh, I wrote about it. It's either in uh, Ever After or I I wrote a little bit about it. Okay. And yeah, but Mm -hmm. I I, I couldn't publish, you know. His yeah. whole story. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, my books, they would be like a foot high if I added everything. All your stories, right? All my stories, <laughs> memories in well, there. Thank you for sharing uh, your stories tonight. Oh, thank you. Thank on you. On the show, we're almost done. Wow, you went wow. fast. <laughs> <laughs> and so, where's the best place that people can get a hold of you for a hypnotherapy session? And, and you can do that on Zoom with them, right? Um, I tried Zoom. Mm-hmm. Um, there was something missing there. Okay. I think. I, I, I've tried to do it on Zoom as well. And I just, do don't you? Feel, yeah, but I don't feel as comfortable. Right, right. I, right. I love like responsibility, see the right? It's such a responsibility. Yeah. But yeah. I know, I know therapists that do and do it just fine. Yeah. That's yeah. what I hear as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much. And they can thank you and, for having me. Thank yeah, you. It's a pleasure to meet you too. It's always a yeah. pleasure to meet you too, Barbara. Thank you, thank you so much my and pleasure, inviting pleasure. me on your show. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, when you come to Albuquerque again, you're I will. Lots of friends. We'll have to get together. I have I have Melinda Leslie, I think. No, that's Sedona. I think she's in Sedona. Yeah, I I I'm gonna head that way after COVID for sure. Yeah, I'm a traveler and it's it's cramped my style, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> I can't wait to get on the road again or in oh, on oh, I know I'm ready to break out. Right, exactly. Yeah. My kids yeah. have me under quarantine since last February. Right, right. <laughs> yes, they take care of it. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thank you again for being Thank you for allowing me to share. Thank you. Thank you for reaching that one person. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And and they can reach you also on Facebook or email or what? Um, I'd rather email. Okay, so that is the mom, D, yeah, D Mm -hmm. as in dad, Mm -hmm. A M -hmm. O M one five one six five at aol.com okay wow. all right everybody thank you for thank you. tuning in we'll see you next week where we have brad olson and have a, a glorious week in yes. the name of gloria hawker and her wonderful work thank thanks you. everybody thank you. see you next thank week you. bye much love much love